some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Now, at this moment, I would like to say that I am in recovery mode from a rather nasty illness that prevented me from making any of my videos over the past few days. I had such severe chest congestion that every time I tried to talk while trying to produce a video, I would end up in a rather uh, severe coughing fit. But thanks to some uh, medications and some uh, rather good whiskey from my dad, uh, which helped clear, clear the chest congestion out, I can at least talk again and uh, do my best with these videos from this point on while I am in recovery mode. Now, as such, I've been observing some of these stories that have been coming out uh, lately, especially this particular interesting one right here of a Michigan man who, uh, well, was uh, caught driving without a license while uh, in a Zoom court hearing. And, uh, well, it ended up having so many twists and turns that it is any wonder that it saw any resolution whatsoever. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Flashback. Assistant Public Defender Natalie Tate for Mr. Harris, who should be present to do. Mr. Hello. Harris, are you driving? Um, actually, I'm pulling into my doctor's office, actually. So, so I'll just give me one second. I'm parking right now. Great. You stationary? I'm pulling in right now at the second. Yes, I am. All right. What are we doing? Uh, Your Honor, we are respectfully requesting an adjournment in this matter, um, up possibly two to four weeks that the court would allow. Okay. So maybe I don't understand something. This is a driving while license suspended. That is correct, Your Honor. Um, and he was just driving. And he didn't have a license. Uh, that's what the charge is, Your Honor, yes. No, I'm looking at his yes. record. He doesn't have a license. He's suspended and he's just driving. That is correct, Your Honor. Oh. Hello? One minute, Mr. Harris. I don't even know why he would do that. So defendant's bond is revoked in this matter. Defendant is to turn himself into the Washington County Jail by 6 p.m. today. Failure to turn himself in will result in a bench warrant with no bond. Well, this story, of course, went viral, and, uh, well, apparently the first twist came not too long after that, where there was a clerical error discovered within this whole thing that led to the retraction of, uh, well, just about everybody who posted this. I know I didn't post it myself because I was sick at the time. But I'm sure I would have done the same thing myself. So let's see uh, at least one other news source uh, post, the, post their retraction. Maybe I don't understand something. This is a driving while license suspended? That is correct, Your Honor. Um, and he was just driving. And he didn't have a license. Oh. Uh, Corey Harris, who went viral last week uh, due to a 
video that showed him driving while attending a court hearing for driving with a suspended license was actually the victim of a clerical error and also misreported news. And so we have to correct our own coverage of this because there was some context that was totally missing from the reporting. Now he actually did not have a suspended license. And the reason why it appeared he had a suspended license was due to a clerical error. And the story was kind of fake news. So for those who might have actually missed the original story, the footage showed Corey Harris calling into a court hearing before Judge J. Cedric Simpson of the Washington, Washington County District Court. So here's the video. So if you just take the viral video at face value and you don't do any other digging, it just it's it looks funny, right? Hilarious that a guy is dealing with a court issue because of the fact that he drives with a suspended license and he's calling into the court proceedings as he's driving, presumably with a suspended license. But it turns out he didn't have a suspended license. Um, so uh, as Reason points out, it turns out that all these stories were based on a falsehood. Harris's license had been reinstated years prior and was only registering as suspended due to a clerical error. USA Today went even deeper in their correction saying that Harris's license had been suspended during a now settled child support case before it was ordered reinstated. Court records show the reason Simpson and no one in the courtroom knew about the reinstatement is because the Michigan Secretary of State's office never received a clearance from the Saginaw County friend of the court, which was supposed to make that change and make it clear in the records that his license is no longer suspended. And so without that clearance, the lift on Harris's license never officially went into effect. Well, you would think that would be the end of that story. Mistakes were made, people apologized. You would think that would be the end of it, but... But wait, there's more. Hang on to your seat, baby, cause this one's a screamer. Yeah, there's a lot more to this story than meets the eye. And, uh, well, several more twists and turns lie around each corner. End of flashback. Well, the case of the people versus Corey Harris. Yeah, Township. Good afternoon. May it please this honorable court, Dion Webster Cox, appearing on behalf of Mr. Harris. How are you, Your Honor? We will see. We're good. <laughs> We're good. Um, Mr. Brown, or somebody from the PD's office, because I did not get a substitution. I got an appearance. Oh, I've got a substitution, substitution right here. To signed off on? It is. All right. Then I don't need to address. I don't need Thank to you. address the public defender's motion to withdraw. I'll consider that withdrawn given the substitution. I do have an appearance. And I will sign off on the substitution. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What are we doing today? So, Your Honor, we were going to, there are several options that my client. Well, and I, I want you to know, counsel, that um, because of certain things, the court has a number of things I have to say. And here comes the next twist in our little twisted story right here. I mean, it's like a damn roller coaster ride with this particular nut job right here. So let's enjoy the ride while it lasts because this one's gonna be a doozy. Okay. Because I have because I think the record given particularly some of Mr. Harris's comments with reference to this court potentially acting what at least as I'm to understand is on uh, what some may be, or is it, let's put it this way. People are saying, and quite frankly, your client has made the assertion that the Pittsfield Township, as well as this court, was acting on some type of defective or faulty information, which I will tell you, counsel, 
cause the court, given what the court did, to investigate what my ruling was. And I will tell you that that assertion is absolutely correct with reference to any faulty information that either came through to the Pittsfield Township Department of Public Safety or to this court ultimately at the May 15th hearing. And I think it needs to be stated, I've been asked for comments. I have refrained from comments as my normal practice is. This court with the pending case will speak on the record. And so I am going to make sure that the record is very, very clear as to what this court knows and what this court acted on on May 15th. And we can start with this. And my basis for doing it is because of what was said about what this whole process was and that an indication council, and I, I know council, you've been before me before. Absolutely. I know it is not coming from you, but you also know how I am. I do. And, and the thing is, is that if for whatever reason, the one time in my life I was wrong, I will say it and did. But when I'm not wrong and when people are not to blame, then it also needs to be said. So I will try to get through this as quick as I possibly can. But I will tell you, first of all, with any reference to your client having had a license, on that day and some indication or misunderstanding as to whether or not he had a license. Let me make it very clear, based upon what the courts looked at, he has never had a Michigan license, ever. Oh, okay, so what we have here, yes, there was a clerical error where the guy's license had been suspended, but that had been corrected. But on the day in question where he was driving during that Zoom court hearing, he had no driver's license and, well, really had no driver's license for years, if at all. But wait, this gets a lot more interesting. The deeper you go into this rabbit hole, the worse it gets. And has never had a license in the other 49 states and commonwealths that form up this great union. He has never had a license. In point of fact, when they suspended his license, and what people don't understand, when they suspended his license in Saginaw, they don't suspend the license. They suspend the privilege to drive in this state. Hence, for example, if he had had a Kentucky license, he would be able to drive everywhere that Kentucky would allow him to drive. He just couldn't drive in Michigan because his privileges had been restricted. I know you know that, but that wasn't at all said. But it doesn't matter because he didn't have a license ever. There is also then, and you know, I will, when it is necessary, come to the defense of my sister courts, and I will come to the defense of Saginaw. They got a great chief judge. The chief judge answered the question. But I will tell you, that court and its friend of the court did nothing wrong. His license was his driving privileges, better stated, were unsuspended in 2022. That required Mr. Harris to do something. He didn't do it. Therefore, the friend of the court was under no obligation to send anything to the Secretary of State. Now, I hated that I had to look at all of this, but when there's a question as to what I did, I'm going to look at everything to make sure that what I did was all in order. Okay, okay. To recap so far, the defendant has never had a driver's license at all in any of the 50 states in the union. Now, at one point, his driver's license uh, privileges were suspended and then reinstated and the clerical error came in when the uh, reinstatement was not officially put into record and that was the issue right there. Now, while he was uh, at that uh, Zoom court hearing, he was driving without 
a license without a valid license. And at any time between uh, the when it was suspended and now, he could have easily gotten a driver's license, but he never did. So essentially, this is still all on his head. I mean, the clerical error at this point is hardly worth mentioning considering the history of this case now. But hold on, there are a few more twists and turns to come. There's then an indication from that that because that wasn't sent, there was a direct attack on Michigan's Department of Secre uh, Secretary of State's office saying that the Secretary of State was somehow at fault. Let me tell you something. Secretary of State did what they were supposed to do. And in point of fact, they did nothing because they hadn't gotten anything from the court because Mr. Harris had not paid the reinstatement. This week, or a latter part of last week, once he paid that, Saginaw friend of the court did what they should do, and they sent it. Immediately, based upon the information that I have, the Secretary of State did what they do every day. They took that suspension off of his driving record, and he was then unsuspended. And then your client did what he needed to do with reference to the Secretary of State and paid a read. All right. Just a second, Mr. Mr. Schiller. I'll let I'm going to let everybody respond because thank I, you. I, I am I am not done yet. Okay. All right. You're covering a lot of the points for me. Thank you, Your Honor. And so that came down to that. So the information at the time that I had, that Pittsfield Department of Public Safety had, was all correct at the time of both Pittsfield stop as well as the May 15th day. It was all correct. There was no error by anybody. It was a failure on the part of Mr. Harris to do certain things. Now, I grant you that sometimes that can be a complicated process, but it was certainly not anybody's fault that that didn't happen other than that wasn't paid. Now, Here's the other thing, and I'm like maybe in church where I say I'm, I'm about finished now. But the other part of this is this stop was in October. Most of the cases that we've heard just in this last afternoon are driving while license suspended cases. That's part of my Wednesday afternoon. We go through great pains to try to get people their licenses back, which is really how it should happen. Between October and, and because I don't live under a rock, I actually watch things. You look very nice on TV. Thank you. You're welcome. There was something that was sad that was very disturbing to me. And I'm just going to let you know, because I believe in being fair with everybody. The question was asked along the lines, between October of 2023 and the point in time of the May 15th hearing, was there an attempt by Mr. Harris to correct his license? Here's the part that was disturbing for me, so that you know. Okay. Mr. Harris indicated that at some point he had been involved in some accident. And being involved into the accident that he was basically bedridden or at least housebound, he could not get to the Secretary of State. That was set up there. And I think I don't, I'm going to presume because I don't, my knowledge of counsel, defense counsel is, I know you don't misrepresent anything. Right. You never do. Right. That's not true. Okay. He purposely stated that he could not get to the Secretary of State, which for the way we handle things in this court would have placed him in a whole different category. We would have tried to find a way 
figure it out. And the reason I know that is because Mr. Harris, on December 28th of 2023, do you know where you were? December 28th, 23. 23rd. 2023. I know I was laid, I was laid up from, from my accident. You were at the Secretary of State's office. And you're at the Secretary of State's office because you re you redid and got your new Michigan ID. I have the date. Now that we know that there was no clerical error because he did not do what he was supposed to be doing, we now know that he was at a specific location renewing his uh, state-issued ID, which he apparently knows how to do, instead of, well, trying to get his driver's license. Oh, me, oh, my. This guy is just so full of surprises. But wait, it gets a lot better after this. That's the date you did it. December 28th, 2023. You did. And so that you also know, and in all fairness to counsel, because I don't know if counsel knows this or not, the way I know that he's never had a license is because May 3rd, 1990, he's never, he, he was 19 at the time, May 3rd, 1999, he applied for his first Michigan ID. Counsel knows, so I do, you cannot have both. You either have an ID or you have a license. One of the two. He has religiously every year <laughs> um, gotten a new ID. And so he knows that he doesn't have a license. And quite frankly, I just wish he would have said that at the beginning. And all of this hoopla could have been just put all aside. And we all go through the process as we do with all of the people coming here to try to get him his license back. But his falsehoods, misstatements are not going to fare him well in this court. I'm done for now. I'm sure I will have something else to say. Whoever, whichever one of you would like to speak first, you may. I'll wait to go last. <laughs> yes, um, I spent yesterday at the Pistol Council Police Department with Officer Monastere for the traffic stop in this case. Um, I also noticed the December 28, 2023 date, and I, I know the significance of that, and the court just went through that painstakingly, and I thank you for that. Um, in addition, at the traffic stop, I would, when I was at the police department yesterday, we watched the body cam video. At least twice during this traffic stop, he acknowledged to the officer that he did not have a valid license. Quote, unquote, quote, actually, I don't have a valid license. Close quote. The question was, are you a valid driver? Quote, I am not. Close quote. So, you know, like this, this is all, all this hoopla and the circus atmosphere it is, in my opinion, is an affront to the justice system. I mean, I've been a prosecutor for more than 30 years, and to see this kind of hoopla around a driving while licensed suspended case is ridiculous. And it wasn't caused by this court, and it wasn't caused by the Pittsfield Township Police Department, it was caused by the extra judicial statements made outside of this courtroom. Thank you. Okay. So go ahead, Couch. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Well, first thing I'd like to say is very first thing is we're here and that we 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 all saw this video. We didn't, I wasn't in court, I wasn't even on YouTube watching the court today, right? I saw it because someone saw it and decided to make a decided to post it. I can assure you that that was not Mr. I don't think he has the capacity to be able to post it like that on YouTube or 
or Instagram. So that was not him. And it happened to take, take off and go viral. So he had no, what we saw was him saying what? I'm, he was driving, which he should not have been driving, right? We're not, we're told not to drive on Zoom while doing that. So that's how this came to, came, came to the attention because the court, I saw you. He said, I can't believe this. Is he driving? And we all said that everyone who saw that video asked the same question. And that just it became the, it became a joke. It became a complete joke. Now, with respect to why, what we want to do, and I cannot say anything is with respect to what my client has said, but when we talk about the hoopla, my client didn't start the hoopla. Perhaps he's made some comments, but he didn't start the hoopla whatsoever. That was someone that was outside, that was outside of his control as to how it went viral. He had no control over that. And that I'm going to stand on that. He did not, he did not send it out to Instagram. He didn't send it out to wherever. He didn't do that part. So with respect to, did he have a, a I, I don't want to try this case today no at all, but what I want to do is focus on what's good. Now, what was good? That day in October, this officer here, that could have gone a whole other direction. And I'm so happy that you were so kind and courteous to my client. Thank you, officer. Thank you so much. Because it could have gone another direction. We are here right now. My client has a, a application, an appointment to go to the Secretary of State for his permit. He's working on that. I want to focus on how do we correct this and cure this? How do we go forward with this situation? Whatever, he was not under oath under any of the things that he said. So we're not talking about any type of perjury going on. Right. Very true, right? True. So with that being the case, let's move forward with this. He is here. I, what I'd like, this is what I'd like. Because- Counsel, let me just- Yes. Me. I would like to move forward to yes. on this case. We handle these cases all the time. But I will tell you, as you know, having appeared before me, the one thing I don't like is when people don't take responsibility for what they don't. When they take responsibility for it, we will use whatever we can to try to get you to another spot because it doesn't behoove any of us for you to be in that spot. One other thing that I will say, when you say it wasn't started by him, oh, it certainly was. It certainly was when he made his first statement to WXYZ about blaming people for this happening. And he shouldn't have done it because when you look at the whole thing, the person that needed to be blamed, and we can go back to a very, a lot of other points, but I'm not here to embarrass it, but the person that needed to be blamed is the person that he was staring at in the mirror. He didn't do what he should have done. Damn right. He's the only one to blame in this scenario. There was no clerical error or anything like that that caused him to never get his driver's license. In fact, that was a conscious uh, choice on his part ever since he was 19 years old. And that is on the record now. But let's stick around for a few more minutes because there's one more twist to coming. And that's okay. The majority of people that come here on a license thing didn't do what they were supposed to do. That's like a given. They don't go about blaming anybody. They just say, Your Honor, I didn't pay the ticket. Your Honor, I just didn't do it. I just didn't have the time to do it. I just didn't take whatever. Right. Just own it. Once you own it, then it becomes a whole lot easier just to move forward. Okay, I'm sorry. I interrupted you and I said I wouldn't, but Thank my, you. I understand. my court. I, <laughs> no, no, I know who you are and I respect that. So and, and where I am is where I've always been because I can assure you that when he did speak to WXYZ, that day he, I wasn't representing him. I, I was representing him yesterday, right? And what did, and you would hear, heard my message is that, what steps are to correct this. And that's what I'm about, Your Honor. How do we correct this, right? I understand the entire process. I have not gone into detail, but I will take the word of the court 
and of Mr. Stiller here, Brother Council, and about the background and the, and the history of it. But how do we go forward? And that's why, and that's why I'm here to sort of minimize. You okay? Penny, he, he he did get into an accident. Can maybe sit down. Can maybe sit down. please, Your Honor. Right behind. Oh, hold on. Okay. And now that's real. That's a real injury. I, I have no comment. Okay. So what we're looking for, because there are some options here, my client has indicated to me and would like me to indicate to the court that he is in the process of procuring his license. Oh, hopefully that privilege will be available to him, but he does have, as you stated earlier, and I have the receipts, he did pay the reinstatement fee. Those fees are paid. Anything that was out in the previous court, those fees have been paid and I've been presented with those receipts. In addition, on tomorrow, he's got his permit test coming up. And then after that, because he's an adult, he's working on it so that he can take advantage of the offers that are available. Because as you say, this court does want to help. Absolutely. And with that, because my client was in an accident and, and I haven't seen the medical records, but because of some of the things it could be, we don't, I don't know. But sometimes our memories gets a little get a little foggy. Now, am I going back to 1999? No, I'm not. But I'm just saying that I don't want, I'm saying from this day forward, he is working diligently to take the steps necessary to get his driver's license so he can take advantage of the generous offer. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, yes, Mr. I need to say this, uh, one additional thing. I think Fletcher Cox and I need to approach the bench. It may involve Mr. Allen. Who's Mr. I Allen? know because I know what it is. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, well, who's Mr. Allen? That's my bailiff. Oh. Um, I, I will give out whatever date I can. Okay. Counsel, you probably didn't know this, and I wasn't sure where the prosecutor was going to bring. He's got a warrant. No, I did not know. Yes, he has a warrant for his arrest. Uh, a bench warrant out of Ellen Park. Ellen Park. Mr. Allen. 24th District Court. Okay. The shocking thing about it is for a driving while license suspended. That he didn't take care of. Okay. And there you go. The final twist in this whole twisted story. More twists and turns than a pretzel could ever dream of. And, uh, well, yeah, uh, turns out that this guy was not as innocent as he was made out to be by, a, well, an apparent clerical error that never really happened. Because, well, he didn't take care of his BS since he was 19 years old. He was continuously renewing his uh, state ID when he should have been uh, going after his driver's license. I wonder why that could be. I don't know. But maybe he'll learn. Maybe he won't. But uh, at any rate, he was taken into custody at the end of this uh session but there is no footage of that uh, the camera was not on him at that particular time so well maybe yeah like i said maybe he'll learn his lesson maybe he won't time will tell so at any rate guys i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and i will see you on the next one Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?